Okay. I just dropped off the kiddos. Um, it's been... I'm not even going to say a surprisingly emotional morning. I shouldn't even, like... I'm a human with emotions, I'm a female, uh, I'm a water sign, I'm pregnant, like, there doesn't need to be any explanation, I know, of being emotional, but yet, yeah, I don't know, sleep last night was awful, horrible, terrible, just a really hard time getting tired to fall asleep and I didn't really take a nap yesterday but I did lay around for a good hour, hour and a half. Um, couldn't end up falling asleep. I did watch a little like just TV on my phone while the kids were watching TV and playing and then I kind of tried to sleep and hops coming in through my room, either to go outside and play, um, or, yeah, to come wake me up, which I get, he's three, he doesn't understand the concept of letting mommy sleep or rest, so I never ended up taking a nap yesterday, so then... That is a cool paint job on that car because it looks like a rainbow. So then last night I was like, well, I'll pass out early. I was already kind of grouchy yesterday, which I feel bad for, but we all have those moves, right? And then this morning, oh, so like last night, um, I was kind of watching stuff on my phone before bed and then Callie came in and she saw a bug and she was scared and she wanted me to do something about it and I was like well do you know where the bug is and I can go get it and bring it outside but she didn't know where the bug was so she brought her flashlight so we could go find it and I was like like it's gonna be an impossible task to find a bug in our house if like you know she was in a room and then she said it ran away I'm like okay said it wasn't a cockroach, she said it wasn't a cricket, I don't know what it was, um, but, like, if I don't know where it is, I can't help you out, like, there was a cricket in my room earlier, and part of it is because, one, I still don't have a doggy door actually installed, which is something I still want, but I just cannot find the time and energy to dedicate to setting it up that's the whole reason why I wanted the handyman was so that he could come take the measurements find the door that's gonna fit go get the door that's gonna fit bring the door back and install the fucking door and that person literally never got back to me so I know I can go through Home Depot so I called Home Depot and then when they called me back it was like I was on vacation in Kauai, and I was like, well, I'm not going to do anything about it here, so I'll do it when I get back, and I just have been doing other stuff, or had the kids, and I just haven't done it, right? So, part of it's that, because the screen there is torn, and that's another reason why I wanted a handyman, is to fix that. I have fixed the screen before, back when Dave and I were together, Probably before Callie came. I don't know. Maybe after we had one. But now being a single mom with two kids. I just. And being pregnant. Like I just don't have the time or energy sometimes for this shit. But yeah. I'd love to put on a new screen. And I'd love to have a doggy door inserted in there. Um, and then part of the issue is. Bugs come in from where the tile is falling apart. On the master bath. Which I get started happening when I was there. And I get. I rented the house in that state. But at this point now, it's like, it kind of sucks because it's like, 
that shower is completely unusable and it does let in bugs and I'm not one to spray for bugs like I don't believe in that it's just me um, I did have somebody spray when I had termites um, my dad did and he had somebody come out and spray which was awesome that was like right when I had started breaking out in the rash and I'm sure it was like a symbolical thing but you know I didn't understand any of that at that time so, this morning, I finally listened to the dream video, the dream message, and I just bawled. Like, just everything about it spoke so deeply to me, and it also kind of sucked, because it basically just called me out on my bullshit of, like, feeling like a victim, but it's really hard not to with having two kids and being a single mom already and I get I only have them 50-50 like I get I don't have them 100% of the time and that's one of those things I struggle with too right because I'm grateful for that and at the same time I hate it I hate that they're with him I'm trying to remember like the part of the life lesson and Callie loves him so and Hoth likes him too so it's like I'm trying to you know they don't know any better at this point they don't know that he's a fucking asshole who treats people like shit that's their dad that's all they know right so I struggle with that because I struggle with the fact that I hate that they're with him but at the same time I'm grateful that they're with him and I am grateful that he is like insisting on it so that I get a break I don't know if he did it just to fight with me to prove that he could get 50 50 to prove that you know like if he does date somebody like oh well I'm a good dad I take care of my kids 50 percent of the time like you know or if he actually does want to be with them like I don't actually know I do wonder that sometimes if he hates being alone so much that them being there half the time helps, right? Like the whole energy exchange thing because he sucks their energy for half the time. And, but he does like sometimes take them to go play with the soccer ball in the soccer field. He does take them to the children's museum. So I just... I have been in a very, like, victim state of just, like, the whole thing. I haven't been able to switch my mentality yet with this little one coming in, like, a freaking month. If it's not 11, it's less than a month now. Towards a month exactly to the day, to the due day. I haven't been able to switch that because I feel fucking overwhelmed. And I am fucking pissed that I'm pregnant while taking care of two other children and fucking single and I'm fucking pissed at myself for it for getting to this point like I'm a fucking adult I know how contraception works too I could have chosen to go that route and I didn't and I chose to use to not use contraception with somebody that fucking wasn't there for me when I was crying even though we live eight minutes apart and I fucking deserve way better than that shit the other shit didn't really start coming out until like we were already together but I ignored those red flags straight from the beginning I was annoyed with him in the fucking beginning I didn't think he was cute from the fucking beginning like I found him like kind of repulsive and instead of just trusting that and trusting my gut and trusting those instincts, I fucking dated him and slept with him and had to move in and all that shit anyways. And I am pissed that I'm fucking doing this alone because this isn't what I thought my life was going to look like. And I feel like the fucking reading is telling me that I need to like switch my entire mentality which I get but I'm just having a really hard time doing so basically calling me out for victimizing myself which I know I am and calling me out on the fact that 
good things in life take hard work. I really just want to fucking push the easy button. I do. Well, look how easy it was for me to get fucking pregnant. Then there's the guilt associated with that one. Because there are so many moms and dads and people and couples and married and whatever that want to be pregnant so bad and they're trying so hard and they can't get pregnant, right? And for me, it has never been a problem. I am extremely fertile and it happens super easy. So I should be grateful for that, right? Because other people want kids so bad and they can't have it. I knew I was going to have another kid, but obviously this isn't what I wanted it to look like. I didn't want to end up being a single mom of three fucking children. So there's the guilt and shame associated with that one, and I get it's all judging myself because nobody else is judging me, and I get that, but it's definitely obviously stuff that's been imprinted on me at some point, and... Um, like there's been so many times where I mean I didn't really think about it until like halfway through like how much easier it would be if I wasn't pregnant and then the idea that I was like even considering the fact that I'd be happier if this little one wasn't alive made me feel fucking guilty I had that whole meltdown and I have thought numerous times about what if I just gave this one up for adoption because there are people that want little teeny tiny babies, right? And I don't think I could do that. I literally don't think I could. Would it make my life a lot easier? Yeah. Would I grieve like shit? Yeah. And now it's like to the point that I already have like all the baby stuff and have been prepping and like what am I supposed to do? Just like change my mind like in the last month? And then the idea of, like, having breast milk come in and not breastfeeding and just, like, all the feelings and guilt and shit that would be associated with that. Like, do I want to go through that? Like, I don't fucking know. And what does that even look like as far as, like, adoption processes? And then what if they end up with somebody who doesn't, like, treat them well and, you know, like, all the shit. And then the one card that fucking talked about, like, seeing, like, it's weird, because those were not the messages I thought from my dream, like, at all. Like, I did not see that at all. I know these are messages I need to hear. Doesn't mean I like to hear them. Um, but the, uh, the one that talked about, like, the beauty and the blooms and what I'm growing and I know that I'm growing like a healthier family compared to what I was raised with and I know that's like a huge part of this is like breaking the cycle for my children and the fact that I am growing a baby cool yay it's awesome do I see the beauty in it no not at all I wish a lot of the times that I wasn't pregnant? Yeah. And how fucking awful is that one? But there are so many people out there that would, like, love to be pregnant as easily as me, and I'm, like, the opposite, wishing I wasn't going through this right now. And I have not been able to switch my mindset and see the beauty in it at all. And I know it's been great for my healing, And I know this little one's, like, making me build a community and support and learning how to show myself that love and, like, you know, asking, you know, I didn't even ask, Rachel offered to come over and help with the car seat and the pack and play. I think she offered for the pack and play and I was like, oh, will you help me with the car seat too? Because I know she's strong enough to lift it and then together for us to figure it out like 
I didn't do that before. I didn't ask for help. I didn't have friends that were willing to help. I had isolated myself in a super unhealthy relationship, and I try to give myself props for how far I've come, and it's been really hard lately when I've been dreaming about fucking narcissists, because that's all shit, obviously, that I want to let go and not deal with anymore, and I get that that's probably part of it, is letting go of it through that dream state. But I definitely have not been able to switch my mindset to that, like, happy, beautiful, like, excited to have a baby state at all. Because now, all I can think about is the fact that I'm going to have this little one full time. So, I no longer get that break. And what that's going to look like on me, and my mental and emotional state, and physical state, because, you know, obviously babies don't let you sleep through the night in the beginning, and on nights like last night when Callie slept with me, and then I just had such a hard time sleeping, and then Hobbs came and woke me up once in the middle of the night because he wanted milk, which I usually have to roll no milk, like I will fill it up in the morning, but I usually put water by his bed, and he did not have a water bottle by his bed so he didn't even have options of something to drink, so part of it's my fault because he didn't have an option of something to drink to get him through until the morning. And then he gets up and goes pee in the middle of the night, which is awesome, but him and Callie got these like onesie PJs last night, yesterday from Target, that they both wanted to wear to bed last night. And so they both slept in them last night, and... Hobbs, when he takes off the top to go pee, which I don't even know if he necessarily needs to do, um, if he's just going pee, because he could just, like, unzip it and pull out his penis and go pee, but he took off the top, but he, like, did it so the sleeves are inside out, and he doesn't know how to do them right side in yet, so I fixed it before bed for him, and he gets up in the middle of the night and goes pee, which is great. But he can't just go right back to sleep because he can't figure out how to put his arms back in the onesie. And instead of just leaving it down, he wants to put his arms back in the onesie and, you know, have it back on. So then he comes in for that. And then he comes back in because he wants to snuggle. And I was like, Callie's already in here, but you can come lay down by our feet. So then I feel bad for not cuddling with him when he was probably wanting some physical, like, love. Because I'm fucking tired. I already, like, sleep was super disturbed last night. Like, super. Like, I never got to that, like, deep sleep. And then I wake up at, like, 4 something. Like, an hour. I think, like, 4.20 something. And my alarm is going to go off at, like, 5.44. So then I'm, like, seriously. Like, the last thing I want to do is be awake right now. So I laid there couldn't end up falling back asleep with like check my phone intermittently and then it's like I never did fall back asleep so I should have just fucking got got up as it was because then I didn't get up until like it was almost time to get Callie up so that I'm like telling her that she needs to get up and she's like no I want to wait for you to come back after you shower and I'm like sweetheart there's not time so then I feel rushed this morning because I didn't just get up when I was supposed to. So then I'm feeling like I'm rushed trying to get them out the door and shit like that. And then it's funny because I ended up there like way earlier than Addie. Because she's usually there before me. And today was the first day that Addie is driving Callie to school for me. And that's the thing. I am so grateful for that. Like I get to be a part of the carpool without actually having to do part of the carpool. So, like, Addie is taking Callie to school for me. So, like, if I bring Hobbs to Nature's Path Montessori, um, where Gemini goes, they're younger. So, Addie has Gemini, who's three, and Neo, who is six, and goes to Callie's school. And Gemini and Hobbs go together. She's she go to school together. She's the one that told me about that school. And it works out perfectly, right? So, I only have to make one trip. It is about 20, 25 minutes, depending on traffic. Um, like there was an accident last time, so it was like 25 minutes to get there this morning. Easy breezy, no traffic. 
probably got there in about like 20. Um, so I get that I'm lucky there because she's driving Callie to school along with Knox, who is also in first grade with Neo and Callie. And Knox's two older sisters who also go to that same school. And then Aubrey, who is Knox's mom and the other two girls' mom, will be picking those kids up and is also picking Callie up and then driving them back to her place, which is about 15 minutes in that direction, uh, the opposite direction. So it's still about 15 minutes, but um, Addie's going to meet me there with Hobbs for us to exchange kids. So it's like, I don't even end up having to do like the extra part of the drive because that mom takes her kids to Addie's in the morning and then Addie takes them to school, right? So it saves us each one trip, basically. Well, I get saved two trips, basically. So like, it should only be about an hour of driving instead of like three hours of driving, I think. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But yeah. So it's like I have all this help, all this support, which is great. And I wouldn't have it if it weren't for this little one. But I think part of me is having a hard time too because I've always had that like career mentality that like I like having a career that identity so I'm definitely not going to have that for a while and I get it's not that long in the scheme of things like I'm slowing down now like a month or two before and then I plan on taking three months off after so what like five months maybe six like a half a year but I'm having a hard time with that like I never saw myself being like just a mom just to stay home mom so I think now having to like redefine that really is well part of your journey here a big part of your journey is being a mom and giving the love to these ones that you did not give and I think part of me was really like just hoping that I would get that partner experience during the pregnancy, during the birth, right? During the raising of the kids. All the shit that you want, that you idolize as a child. Thank you, Disney movies. I don't know. Disney's always got one pair anyways, so I don't know where that comes from. But, um, most Disney movies are like, what, a handful that have both parents? or on Elsa who don't have either um and that whole message of like slapping me upside the head like hey girl no one's coming to save you so get over it and save your fucking self and we'll start like recognizing that you're just gonna have to put in some work to raise these kids I am just having a hard time so Anywho, thank you. I'm sure I needed all the release. Um, your mom leaving the video was super cute. My parents would never do that. And I'm having a hard time there too. Um, with like the lack of like wanting to help or talk to me or check in and see how I'm doing or like they don't they like could care less right and I get that that's part of our contract or soul contract what whatever with being here they're just gonna fucking isolate themselves more and more literally it like we only ever talk me calling them and I'm just fucking tired of that um I don't know. We 
we did just go on family vacation. That was awesome. That was fun. I need to be grateful for shit like that, right? And thank God I have you to talk to. And I do have other friends, too. And that's why it's like, I don't even know why I'm still so stuck in that, like, victim role. Like, I don't. And that girl does decorate, like, magazines. So I think that would be awesome for the staging photos, for sure. Alright. I'm going to eat something. I have the personal trainer in two hours, so maybe I can nap for like an hour, hour and a half. It's a hermit thing. I have been such a hermit lately. It's been ridiculous. Like, I haven't been wanting to be around people, like, not really at all. I don't know, I guess my biggest worry is, like, can I financially support these three kids while still taking care of my mental and emotional well-being? And I get that Dave was a piece of shit and never really helped me out in the first place, so it's like, he it did it all anyways, and I have more support now with the doulas and my therapist. You know, like, friends, I have more support now than I did before, and yet I still feel this way, so I don't know if that's just me, like, being stuck in that role, or, like, not realizing that I actually do have help, or, yeah. Alright, that was a lot of rambling, still a lot of emotions. I was going to talk more about the door thing and the lock thing and explain mine too, but I don't have time or energy to do that. So that one will stay on the scratch pad. And I will talk to you later. Thank you for doing the dream reading. I love you.